Hello, this is Jennifer Witt, and welcome to ProjectManager.com and our webinar today on how to become a great leader. My name is Jennifer Witt, and I'm Program Director of ProjectManager.com. So first of all, before we begin, I want to invite you to get involved with us during this webinar today. We are very social, and we have some social outlets for you to express yourself and get involved with us during the webinar. So first of all, I'm not sure if you're on Twitter. If you are, for those of you who do have Twitter accounts, if you um, use, if, if you see the bottom of the screen, we have um, some hashtags and, and handles for you to use. So if you are tweeting our uh, webinar today, you can use at Project Tips with the hashtag of Project Manager. If you see in the top right hand of the screen, you can uh, tweet your tips under what's happening under your Twitter account. I've sent one on at Project Tips and Trends in 2012 for Project Managers. As you can see, that comes over my Twitter channel. Also, I would invite you to this great project management community. Project manage, it's, a, it's called Project Manager Community, Best Group for Project Management. There are over 100,000 project managers from across the world who participate in this site. And if you go there, all you have to do is request to join, and you can get involved with people literally all around the world. There are great discussions here where people are asking real-time questions on their projects, and they get the expertise from people of different disciplines all over the world, different feedback. You can see it's very active. If you see in the screen there, there's um, me there, and you can start your own discussion if you log in. And you see below, that's Jason. Jason is the CEO of ProjectManager.com, and he is very active in the community, always posting questions. So as you see there, he has one on how to control project scope. So get involved with us, and as we're going along, you can start your own discussion in the LinkedIn community or tweet along with us. So um, today, what we want to talk about is understanding leadership gaining influence, developing yourself, and what are some next steps that I can take to that where I can grow to become a great leader. Even if you are a great leader, we feel like we feel like we can always improve in our leadership skills. So what triggered this? So I've been doing some research on the trends for 2012 and what's happening in the project management community and how we can become more effective leaders. So I'm just staggered to once again see there's more research that's out, more recent uh, research on project manager pitfalls. I'm sure you've seen this list. It, it really doesn't change <laughs> over time, or it hasn't really changed over time. So I'm looking, looking at this research that just came out under project manager pitfalls, and I noticed that at the top of the list, one of the project manager pitfalls is project managers doing versus leading. Uh, some of the other pitfalls you may have seen is not planning, focusing on tasks versus deliverables, ineffective communication, ineffective time management, and the list goes on. But I'm always shocked to see that one of the major pitfalls is that project managers get so engrossed in managing of the project that they forget to lead the people. And you know, that's understandable. The project managers have a lot of hats to wear. And you know, we see the topics of the project management hard skills, the project management soft skills, meaning uh, they have a balance of having to know all of the skills that it takes to come up with a schedule, a timeline, manage the resources, uh, manage the triple constraint, work with the stakeholders. There are a lot of hats that project managers wear, but one of the most important ones is the leadership role. So this research triggered uh, triggered my curiosity and had had some interesting conversations with my own team and other people I interact with. So the question became, became well, how do we become better leaders? So it's really understanding what that term means. So me personally, I love John Maxwell. John Maxwell is one of my favorite authors. Uh, you may have known him. If you, I feel like Google is one of my 
favorite friends, one of my best friends. So you have access to the internet and the Google or any other search uh, search engine out there. If you Google John Maxwell, you'll see that he has he has so many books on leadership. So he's one of my favorites. So so I go to my my leadership expert, which is John Maxwell, and I'm like, what is? I'm refreshing myself on what is leadership, and how can I improve my own skills and work with my own team and in helping them grow as leaders too. So of the top 10 uh, leadership skills that you know I think are important, it's like if you think of le a leader, John Maxwell uses the acronym leader. He says um, that leader is the L stands for leader, the E stands for equip. The leader actually equips themselves and their team for success, meaning the training that they need, the tools that they need, any um, access to information, anything that helps them become successful. He gives them the tools in their tool belt to um, equip them for success. The other is um, the A stands for attitude, having a great attitude. You know, one thing is, uh, especially for project managers and projects, uh, they can be very intense. Like we saw, we were juggling a million hats. So one thing, it's hard to do. The, the timelines get stressful. People need a lot of things. There's a lot of stress, usually miscommunication. So the leader provides a great attitude to be the calm in the storm, because it doesn't help at all if the leader of the team is all upset, they have to hold and stand and provide the calm in the storm. The D stands for dreamer. So a leader is a dreamer. So dreaming of bigger things, how can it be different? Looking outside of the current situation to the bigger picture. E stands for excellence, always striving for excellence. Um, again, you may have heard me um, speak before about that my background is in sports. So in sports, one thing that athletes try to do is become better. They really practice at excellence. They practice, practice, practice. They get back to the basics. So as project managers, it's important to continue to work on the basic skills. Um, the research shows that it takes over 10,000 hours to become an expert in your field. So that's a lot of time to practice. But it's continuing to grow, grow your skills, grow your behavioral skills, the hard skills, strong skills um, needed to attain excellence. The R in leader, according to John Maxwell, stands for relationships. So a great leader has built and nurtured relationships. Uh, for us today and today's time, it's not only offline, but in your community face-to-face, -face because some of our teams are global, they're international, they're of different cultures, different diversities, different genres, have different interests. So we've got to nurture the, build and nurture the relationships, not only person-to-person, -person, like in-person, but also we call that offline, but also online. So how do people become involved say in the social media technologies or how do we um, remain remote because some of our teams are global. Um, for me, I'm in the United States and some of my uh, team members are of projectmanager.com or in New Zealand or in France. So it's like how do we maintain, build and nurture those relationships? So it's but that's a critical piece to build and nurture relationships that you can access and leverage um, to get things done. It's very important. So now we know what the acronym of LEADER means, according to one of my favorite leadership experts, John Maxwell. He gives 10 ways to um, influence, um, how an influencer gains influence. So if you look at leadership, um, one, of the main, one of the main qualities of a leader is influence. We actually influence people. So again, for those of you who may, if you have children who participate in sports, or if you, um, if you are a sports person yourself, 
or maybe um, you're familiar with, say, the military or school organizations, or think of your favorite outlet where you think of uh, a leader that has strong influence. Think about what those people have to do. How do people influence people to get things done? In our case in project management, how do we influence our team members? How do we influence stakeholders or the different people we interact with? Well, we probably more than likely do not have authority over those people. So there are 10 ways that um, an influencer gains influence. So here are the 10. So you might want to write these down. I'll go slow. One is integrity with people. So influencers gaining influence have integrity with people. So what does that mean? So if they tell them something, they try to remain integrous in that it's true. So for instance, not hiding things. Of course, like on projects, being open with your team members and giving them the truth about what's happening. If you're providing status to someone, give them the truth about the true status. If you're working with your stakeholders or your change control board or your customers, it's very important not to hide things, not hide information. Let them know the truth about what's really happening on their project. No one likes surprises. So integrity, being integr integrous or having integrity with people is one of the ways. Number two, nurtures people. What does that mean? What does it mean to really nurture someone? So leaders, say for instance, you have teams, so if you think of your project team, how can you nurture people? That's providing them the resources they need. Uh, the, for instance, some of the projects go for a long time. So how could, what are some things that I could do to nurture my team? Making sure they get enough uh, sleep, enough time to do things, make sure they're eating, taking a break, because if you run your team down, then they're not, you're not, they're not going to be so helpful. They're not going to be fresh. Um, as we know, a lot of projects run under stress. A lot of the team members run under stress. So a great leader nurtures their team members. They also nurture themselves, making sure they're grounded. They um, have time for introspection. They have time to get organized. They have time to, they're making sure they're eating, they're sleeping, they're rested, making sure that they do the things they need to do to maintain and control their stress level as well as the stress level of others. Three is faith, having faith in your people. It's very important for people to know that you have faith in them. For instance, if you have team members working on different things, it's, it's annoying for all of us to have someone coming behind us all the time asking, questioning if something has been done, has it been done right, uh, did they do it, or always maybe questioning that they're going to get something done. So having faith in the team. I mean, a lot of times, a lot of the projects, I'm sure you can relate to being down to the wire of something being completed on time. And you may have, you may begin to doubt your people, your team, are we going to get this done? But at some point, knowing that you have the task schedule, you have the resources that you need, you have the expertise on your team, you've built those relationships, you're doing the things that you need to do as a, a project manager to manage the project, that you've got to have faith at some point in your people that they will get it done. And you have to let them know that. Otherwise, they'll start withdrawing, withholding information, shutting down, not participating, or probably, more than likely, avoiding you at all costs. We've all seen it before and we've all experienced it. Stress does a lot to us to impact our leadership capabilities. Number four, listen to people. So to have influence, so a great leader who has influence, one way that that they gain influence is they actually listen to people. So all people like to be heard. So if you go to the expertise, your team members, your stakeholders, the people on your team, and ask for their advice, actually listen. Or if someone brings an issue or problem to you, 
actually listen to what they're saying. And sometimes listening means listening beyond, listening deeper to the deeper question. Maybe what they're asking is not the real question. Maybe there's a question beneath that. If they're asking uh, a question on, say, the project or timeline, or maybe there's been a reorganization, we've all seen that. That's, in, that's impacting everyone everywhere. So a reorganization, maybe they're asking about uh, some question on the timeline, but maybe their real question is, what does this reorganization mean to me? What do these economic times mean for me, and how is that going to impact, like me and my job or my stability, my ability to to take care of my family? So always look for, listen to what your people are asking, and listen deeper. Listen to what they're asking. Listen to what they're saying. Sometimes people will come to us and give us information we need on the project. Maybe, maybe a lot of the team members are telling us the status is OK, things are looking good, we're good to go. But maybe if you're not listening beneath the radar, you may not be able to, to detect that no, the project really is not on track. It's, it's, it's off track, and there are some major issues. Number five, understand people. So these are hard ones. I mean, understanding people. I mean, people think differently, right? So people think differently. They have different personality styles. They may be of different generations. So the way people approach things, it sometimes makes it, makes it difficult for us all to get along together. I mean, a simple case, if someone's very, just say one example could be if someone's very detailed oriented and ask a lot of questions, and maybe you're not of the type, maybe you're higher level, you don't like all the details, maybe, <laughs> maybe you might disregard someone like who's more detailed, because maybe you don't want to hear all the details or all the information that they want to tell you. So it's understanding people, understanding their perspective. Where are they coming from? How do they think? What are their concerns in their role? So it plays a big part in influencing people when you can understand people. Number six, enlarges people. This is a big one. It's really allowing other people, allowing your team member, allowing them to be bigger. One thing about leaders is the best leaders are sometimes the best followers, meaning that they let the other people be, the other people on their team, maybe their other colleagues, be the most important one. It's not important for leaders to always be the important one, the loudest one, the one who gets all the accolades. Um, a great leader has influence because they let others on their team be bigger. They see beyond. They see more for that person. They envision them forward. Hey, I can see this person growing beyond and moving into. Maybe you want to see them grow from, uh, say, one role, say, in a business unit, or a technical role, or administrative role. Maybe you want to envision them into the project manager role if they want that. But it means something for you to hold a bigger vision for the other people. They feel that, and they know that that's important. And they, that lets them know that you believe in them. Number seven, navigate for the people. So a way that a great leader gains more influence they, they navigate for the people. What does that mean? That means they set the vision. They not only set the vision for the team and the project, but they navigate in how they get there. So if you think of someone guiding the ship, guiding the boat, so they're there. And sometimes when things get off course, a great leader knows how to get them back on track. What are the things that need to be done to get back on track? and makes the people feel comfortable. Hey, we've got it, all right? We're having some issues. Some things are going on that are impacting the project. But we know how to get back on track. Number eight, connects with people. So a great leader who has great influence gains that influence because they can connect with people. 
So if you think about connecting with people, it's usually like, how do I resonate with this person? What's something that we have in common? You know, how can I really connect with them at something beyond the profitable? So a lot of people connect through maybe their children, or if you don't have children, maybe a common hobby or a common sport or interest. Maybe maybe you find that certain person loves art or they love a certain movie that you love. So being able to connect with a person, common interest, or something more deeper. If you connect with people, people once people connect, it's easier to work work through issues. There are going to be issues, there are going to be miscommunications along the way. But if you can connect with someone and get something common, then it's easier to get that person's buy-in. It's easier to influence them because you have a, a better understanding of where they're coming from. So number nine. Nine, a great leader who has greater influence empowers people. So that means that the leader gives them the leeway, empowers them to do what they need to do. Like you don't have to micromanage. You know that you're going to get it done. You're there for questions. If they have any questions, you're certainly there for that. And then if they have any issues that need to be escalated, any barriers that they need to be help um, get through, then you're there to support. But by empowering your people, then you allow them, you, they know that you have the belief in them, and that gives them, keeps them more motivated to uh, get more done. Number 10, so a, a great leader who has greater influence, they gain influence because they reproduce other people. So what does that mean? <laughs> reproduce other people. It means you multiply other, other leaders. So leaders grow and build leaders. Leaders don't have turf battles. They don't get fearful that someone's going to take over their domain. They want to see more people grow. So by growing more leaders, uh, you as a leader can go beyond because you can go do other things. It can help you set a succession plan. Uh, a lot of times people are bound to certain projects because they've gotten themselves in a situation where in an organization or a project, things can't work without them because the, pro the project manager hasn't put a process in place. They haven't shared knowledge. They haven't prepped another person to take over if something were to happen to that person. So by reproducing other people, reproducing leaders, that's going to not only gain respect from your team, your team members, people you know and interact with, they want to be on your team because they know that you're going to help develop them help them build a path, build a way to, to go further as a leader as well. And everybody is looking to, to continue to grow. So if you look at some of the aspects of leadership or leaders that John Maxwell talks about, there actually is a book that I love. I could use uh, give you that as a reference. John um, Maxwell talks about the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership tested by time. There are 21 of those, and I think I'm going to pick 10. I like 10 of my favorite. Is Number one is the influence we talked about. So those are, we just talked about the 10 ways uh, in which a great leader gains influence. And influence is one of the ten irrefutable laws of leadership. So leadership is, um, influence is a true measure of leadership. Nothing more, nothing less. So number two of the ten is the law of process. So really outlining a process for how things get done in your group. So you can't go beyond uh, as a, you can't grow as a leader 
is in one fell swoop. It's a process, your own development process, setting a development process for the people on your team in your organization, but also yourself. It's important for leaders to continue to grow and develop on a continual basis. So people um, ask this a lot. Sometimes what I talk about in some of my sessions uh, with um, my mentees is how they can grow. So what are some ideas? So it's continuing as a project manager to get training, develop your develop your skills on the on the uh, project management plan. How do I get better at at the tools involved? How do I learn new tools to uh, manage my projects? They're always looking at skills. How can I how can I communicate more effectively? You know, if you need to c learn to communicate, maybe. If you're speaking to your group or doing training for your group, how can I get more training to be a trainer? What are some things I can do to develop myself as a speaker? How can I improve my written communication, my oral communication? So it's definitely a process. It's not to be done in a day. It's just every day. A daily piece of your process is always trying to improve. So number three, he talks about the law of navigation. And again, that's a vision. Anyone can steer the ship, but it takes leaders to chart the course. Number four is the law of respect. People naturally follow leaders stronger than themselves. So people naturally follow leaders stronger than themselves. So you have to be perceived stronger than your team members. You have to know what's going on in your project. You have to be the expert in your field. You have to be an expert in project management. You have to know how to lead people. You have to be in the know about everything going on. So if there are other people on the team stronger than you, you're not going to be seen or perceived as the leader of your group. And people are not going to follow you. You're not going to have the influence. You're not going to have the relationships. You're not going to have those things that you need in order to effectively lead your team. The law of respect, this is a big one. It's about um, respecting people. People naturally follow leaders. Um, oh, we just talked about the respect, sorry. The law of intuition. Leaders evaluate everything with the leadership bias. So many times, again, you have to look through beyond what people are telling you. So we all have a gut instinct of what you heard, intuition. So intuition is that gut feeling. Like if someone's telling me something that doesn't feel right, you have to listen to that because there's so many moving parts on a project that maybe the information you're getting from people, they may be giving it to you from a buyer's perspective. So you have to listen intently about what people are telling you and discern if the information you're getting is accurate. Number six is the law of magnetism. Who you are is who you attract. <laughs> so if you look around on your team and you see that people aren't performing, they're not, they're not bought in, they're disengaged, they're disconnected, they hide. So if you look around and that's the culture of your, your team or your organization, then you might want to look at yourself because, <laughs> again, who you are is who you attract. So if the people surrounding you aren't performing, they're disengaged and all of that, then ask yourself, am I that too? The law of empowerment, only secure leaders give power to others. Again, that's being strong in yourself and being empowered to let people do what they do best. I'll be the first to tell you, some of the teams that I lead, they have hundreds of people on there. So they're more skilled than, than I am by any means. I can't know everything there is to know. My background personally is with technology projects. So I can't keep up with technology to like it's just it's a lot to keep up with the latest email. It's a lot to keep up with the latest social media things I need to be on as my computer up to the right uh, level of software or hardware. So if I can't keep up with all of that then I certainly cannot be the expert of all pieces of the technology. And so 
knowing that there are people on the team who are better equipped or trained for those technical pieces. Someone who knows .NET programming or PeopleSoft or SAP, um, they're going to be better equipped and I have to empower them to be able to do their job and their role. Law of buy-in, so people buy into leaders. Then the vision. So in order to get people to adopt the vision of your project or what you're doing, then they have to buy into you first. So in order to do that, you've got to gain the influence. You have to gain their trust. You have to build relationships in order for them to buy into you first and then the vision. If they don't buy into your vision, you're going to have a hard time getting anything done on the project. So these are all components that interrelate. The law of priorities. Leaders understand that activity is not necessarily accomplishment. So there's a lot of activity that goes on and to keep people focused on what's important, what's the priority, always leading guiding. The, pro the, leader, the project leader has to know what's happening on the project at all times and be able to assess how to reprioritize um, the activities for people. Because if they have too much, too overwhelmed, then they're going, that's not setting them up for success. They're not going to like that. They're going to disengage. The law of sacrifice. And this is very important. I've seen this over and over again. It seems like some of the leaders that have some of the stronger uh, stories in, that I can recall and some of the greatest respect for some of the leaders who've sacrificed. A leader must give up to go up. And they have to sacrifice some of the things uh, that they want to do in order to go up. They have to sacrifice their time to go up. They're always learning. They're always growing. But they have to give up some of the reins um, in order to be able to increase as a leader and get in the get in the trenches with you. So those are some of the things that we find, you know, help in uh, growing growing leaders, defining what a great leader is. Again, John Maxwell is one of the experts I turn to. He's written, he's researched over many years some of the greatest leaders there are among all different aspects of walks of life and to pull together these things. It's such a great uh, a guide for people who are trying to grow their leadership. And again, for us as project managers and watching the research and why uh, when they look at the project manager pitfalls, it's like why is the project leadership one always at the top? So if we want to, we as a collective, a collective of the project management community, want to change and alter those statistics over time, we know we can. So these are some of the things that we have to do. And it's a process. So understanding leadership, what it means, what are the traits, how do I gain influence, and developing yourself, knowing, again, this is a process. It takes years. It can't happen in a day. It's, it's over time, learning, growing, learning more about yourself. I think some of the greatest growth I've done over the last few years is really learning more about myself. Um, it's always great to learn about others, but my true growth is developing myself and learning more about me, what makes me tick, what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, what do I need to uh, develop, why do I interact with certain people differently than others, why can I connect with this person but not that person, what's happening, what am I portraying when I walk into the room, what attitude do I have going into the room, and what attitude do I set? What tone do I set? How do I make people feel? It all starts with me. So important step on the slide here is developing yourself and really knowing how to um, increase your own skill sets. So some of the things that, that um, again, that we've talked about is continuing training. There are all kinds of training available now. It's not just sitting in a course room. Now many people have access to the internet and there's training out on the internet 
where you can um, you can get access to training on project management, maybe on the the technology of your of your project, or if you're in construction or green projects or service projects, real estate, anything you can think of. There's information available now on the internet, and a lot of it's free. Some of the, the places that I go to access free information is there are videos on YouTube. You can access things, things on the social media. There's slideshare.net. Uh, the project management community has many, many avenues that you can get free project management training. Um, uh, and I know the Project Management Institute has chapters. They have local chapters where the local chapters for their community provides speakers, training, networking, where people get together. Even in your own environment, whether you're in a small company, whether you're in a large company, uh, no matter what aspect, there are people there who, number one, who you can look to to help grow and develop you. So maybe they're your mentor. So you can look to people to be your mentor. Who do you want people to be your mentor? And so they can teach you. The mentors are the people who have been there and they've done that of what you're trying to do. They're the people who are going to give you candid feedback. They're the people who are going to tell you things that you don't want to hear. They're going to help you grow. They're going to have to they're going to help you see yourself where you might not see. They help help you to see yourself where you may not be able to see yourself. They give you ideas. Um, one of the great ones that I love is reverse mentoring. Uh, each summer, we have interns from different parts of the world. We've had, for the past couple of years, interns from Hong Kong who come in. And then we have interns uh, from the university here in the States, other cultures. And I love, I love the reverse mentors of people in college or maybe graduate school people who um, are looking to do maybe what I've done. But they, they reverse mentor me, meaning a lot of times if I'm looking at a problem and I need a creative solution, they can help me look at something uh, different than I'm looking at it today. A lot of the kids coming out of school today are learning new technologies. They're learning new ways, the way they approach problems, the way that they do business. Uh, the way they think about things or approach things is a lot different than how I approach it myself. So reverse mentoring is very strong. But there's all types of training and developing. And it's not just about the hard skills. It's about the soft skills, the leadership skills. One couple of more resources that I can strongly recommend, and I look at a lot of resources, I'm constantly looking out on the, on the web in the project management community. And projectmanager.com has pulled a lot of different resources together. They have a huge community, again, like I showed in the beginning, the LinkedIn group. And there are over 100,000 members of that community that you can leverage. They also have a website, projectmanager.com. If you look on the screen, you can see this is a screenshot of the website, projectmanager.com. Uh, projectmanager.com is a software. So it's a software that you can subscribe to. It helps you manage and track your projects. Honestly, I'm asked to evaluate software from a lot of different companies. And what I appreciate about projectmanager.com software is they're constantly revamping, revising this software to make it easier for people. It's it's easier than, than tools. One of the trends that um, I saw for PMO recently for 2012, they're saying spreadsheets aren't going to work in 2012 for PMOs. If you're in a PMO, project management office, spreadsheets have worked fine in the past. And they're a tool that helps people who you know, do not have some of the, the current uh, software systems. But people are looking because teams are global. They're even with teams who may be in the same city. Maybe they're not in the same building. So more and more people need more real-time information. They need ways to collaborate. 
what Project Manager software has done is included some of the, you can see it's collaborative online. They built in some of the social aspects of it. So, and they have a free trial. So go ahead and check it out. You get a free trial, free 30 days. Um, and they have here videos and a tour you can take and look at some of the features. Also, YouTube. If you go to YouTube and you search for projectmanager.com, you'll also see some videos they have there. Little short clip videos that you can see um, on a wide range of topics and managing projects. Um, there are some on the top deliverables of a project. So for those learning or wanting a refresher, the top deliverables, how to accelerate project success, building project teams, looking at typical project phases. So there are some things for people, again, who are learning new information new. And then for those who have been doing this a while, some refreshers. So go check it out. It's really fun. And then we're very social. We're out in the community. It's projectmanager.com. We're everywhere. But we love to talk with people, too. So if you call on the phone, here's a number here. You can call. You can ask questions about different project management questions you may have. They have great templates. Uh, you may want to see how they can help, how does their software work. You can email us, too. You can email support at projectmanager.com. And join us in LinkedIn, the project manager community. It's, it's awesome. I love some of the discussions out there. Some of them are like real-time, solving real-time problems. Sometimes they're heated debates. <laughs> it's fun to get involved. You can follow us on uh, Twitter. Uh, we're always sending out project tips. Uh, people retweet, we retweet those, say that really quickly a couple of times. And then like us. We want you to like us. So if you go to Facebook.com, uh, we are at Project Manage. And again, here's our website, projectmanager.com. You know, we offer you a free trial just to check it out. Um, people are looking for always emailing us about templates and uh, some of the software. How do I manage my project more easily? So um, projectmanager.com has put it together out there. So those are just some thoughts, again, on the, the topic that is always the top of mind is, OK, so I'm a project manager. And OK, some people may think, project manager equal project leader, and that's not true. So uh, hopefully some of the things that I share today with you will be helpful in, I guess, outlining some of the ways that you can become a great leader, too. And who knows, maybe we'll read about you in John Maxwell's book one day as one of the greats.